Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, just before the final lap, or just well, before we round up the uh, program this morning, we have a conversation now talking about debt. The Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria, Amcon, has stated that businessmen and firms across the country owe the government as much as 3.6 trillion naira. Um, it also went further to state that if these funds were retrieved, it could help the government to clear out some of its foreign debt and, of course, at the same time help to build and uh, fix some infrastructural projects that the government has been struggling with for a long time. We've uh, invited this morning to you know, join in this conversation Dr. Austin Anyogu as a fellow, Institute of Chartered Accountant of Nigeria and an economist. Good morning, Dr. Anyogu. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, so I'm going to start with a very basic question. I, I want to know, um, when you hear about 3.6 trillion naira debt, you, we're talking businesses, we're talking firms, um, you know, and of course this is in oil and gas, it's in hotels, it's, it's so much you know, across the country. What could be the possible reason for, a, a, uh, for inability to pay back loans? Well, um, when you said 3.6 billion trillion, I beg actually, your pardon, uh, 3.6 uh, trillion, trillion sorry, yes, that's actually the amount owed by the 360 businessmen yes. and firms. The actually the actual astounding in I can uh, position I mean, position is 4.4 trillion. So what they have done is that to sieve out 800 billion that is owned by other individuals. You know, so we're actually looking at a point point four trillion that will have been helping this economy, this economy that is under recession. But however, I will I will talk about the difficulty in paying uh, loans because I'm an ex banker, yeah. And um, I, I I tell you that um, one of the greatest problems we have are multiple fold. Most of these banks are owned by private sector, and um, we also find people who deliberately take money from institutions without the intention of paying. And most, some of them, too, are also in connivance with those who also offer these loans. We've seen cases where EFCC have taken bank executives to, to court and found them culpable, find them uh, um, um, guilty of um, embezzlement or diversion of funds. Now, most of these diversion of funds could come by way of loan, you know? So when a banker has compromised, there's every likelihood that the, uh, the debtor will also compromise, you know, that is one. Mm. Then another aspect is um, the, the structure, the transaction dynamics of the loan. You know, uh, when, when a, a loan is properly structured, and the dynamics are very clear, you know, and it's follow suits and there's monitoring. There's every tendency that the loan ought not to go back. And there are also mitigants if it's going to go back. You know, there are recovery um, um, steps if it's going back. You know, that is another point. Then the, the lastly is when it goes back, what are the recourse to the bank? You know, and that is about recovery. And that is about institutions. We don't really have strong institutions. You know, Amcon is grasping between the, the, the problem we have in um, getting court cases, you know, of um, defaulters, the recrastitant depositors yeah. to pay. But they're not, they seem not to be getting headway. So those are the critical uh, factors that makes people not want to pay and um, may also make them not want to uh, uh, obey simple, I mean, instructions in terms of uh, terms of the loan. All right. So let's let's talk about Nigeria's lending structure and uh, high lending rates, because we've seen over time that most of these debts, uh, uh, you know, accrue from high interest rates. So what's your comment on that? Well, uh, the truth is this: high interest rates, high lending rates is a function of the economy. So it's, um, it's like garbage in, garbage out. Let me also tell you that before you give out a loan, there's what we call visibility study, you know? And this visibility study will have factored in those rates, 
you know, that we are going to be taking this money as social rates, and these are the interest we'll be paying, and we are also going to be, we will we'll have enough cash flow to pay, you know. So if, if we're in UK, for example, where interest rates could be 1.5%, uh, you know, it is, it is in the same, in, in the same um, structure, you know, I, I, that's what I mean by garbage in, garbage out. You know, so because the truth is this, you are also earning in an economy that's highly inflated. You know, so you are getting money for at the rate of 25%, uh, for example, but you are also giving services to the economy that also makes you able to end up to 40%. So there's a spread of 15%. So it's a question of discipline. You know, the high rate or, or low rates does not have significant effect here, actually, because you're actually trading or using the money in the same economy, of which you have said, give me this money at this rate. I will return this money at social time, at social rates, you know, because I'm going to do business that I will earn me social amount of money. You know, so I think it's about discipline and consciousness for the fact that you are actually using people's money to do your business. How much? You know, and then that is... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, I just wanted you to also share, you know, how much damage this does to our economy when people can't pay back. Uh, when you have 350 businessmen, firms and the, and the likes, you know, owing as much as 4 trillion naira and, you know, don't seem to be eager to pay back. You know, there are reasons why it might be, you know, a struggle to, you know, to pay back these funds. Uh, the Nigeria's business, you know, um, uh, space also might and the struggles that we're facing, you know, with local businesses, with electricity, with businesses failing and the likes might also be one of the reasons. But how much damage does this do to our economy and to our GDP generally? Huge damage. Huge damage because um, let's not forget the fact that Amcon is an asset management corporation, you know, uh, created by the government. They actually bought over loans from banks to save the economy from collapse. So it has a very negative and huge impact on the economy. How? If we have 4.4 uh, trillion, we probably won't be talking about so much deficit in terms of our, in our budget, that for example. If we're able to recover those money, we could help SMEs, who probably need about 20 million, we could help about 200,000 of, I mean, um, 200,000 of them. At the end of the day, which means we boost employment, we boost uh, transaction capabilities, and we'll also turn around the economy. That is one. Now, another one is that we, we have a debt servicing of about 3.2 trillion in this last project. Now, if you can imagine if we can recover that locally, it means that um, uh, servicing debts, our external debt, and uh, both external and local debt will be a thing. Uh, um, uh, will, will not be a struggle, you know. We have about 3.7 uh, trillion for payment of salaries. You hear here and there that um, government has not paid this salary, government is owing this length of month of salary. You know, such money will, will be very useful in, in, in propelling the economy for a, a brighter and a, a very stable uh, situation. So. It's, it's actually a big damage because the government has bought over this loan. It's actually Nigerian's money. All right. And what they did was to give the banks some money at that time the, to take over uh, those loans. The, the Am Amcon Act has been amended twice, uh, I think 2015 and 2019. Uh, but it still Correct. says you know, that there's still a struggle with the judicial, judicial system um, and uh, judici judiciary basically assisting Amcon to retrieve these loans. How much more assistance would you say that Amcon needs at a time like this in order to get these monies back? As quickly as possible, we're, we're out of time. Okay, um, the truth is this. When I, when I started this conversation, I talked about strong institutions. Yes. Uh, Nigeria is one, you know, and we must do things as one. Those businessmen, are majority of them are Nigerians. Those businesses are in Nigeria. Uh, the costs are in Nigeria. You know, we, we must begin to see the necessity of experience of uh, court um, processions and court uh, procedures. You know, I, I know there, there, there are quite gaps here and there. Uh, what I have found out over the year is that most governments will put up institutions and they will be the ones who cripple the institutions. You know, so we need to start 
to have a very strong institutions that whoever you are, whatever it is, the institution will be allowed to operate effectively and efficiently according to the acts that have established them. You know, and that's what we have. You have the the, the I mean the debtors, the recrustant debtors, being very smart these days, trying to use the court as an avenue to delay payments, trying to use the machinery of the judiciary as an avenue to delay payments. But if uh, if we understand the fact that the court needs to help um, AMCON to recover Nigeria economy, let me even use the word economy, not, not longer uh, non-performing loans, because it's affecting our economy negatively. If we can come together as a single institute that is strong enough, we should be able to surmount uh, the hurdles yes. and get things done as quickly as possible, and then um, uh, Nigeria economy will be, will be well for it. Hmm. So let's now uh, take uh, Arik Air, for instance. In 2017, uh, you know, we called it the largest uh, national or local carrier in Nigeria. But uh, Amcon took over operations of the business because, you know, some issues, including, you know, on, on inability to repay its debt. So how about businesses that they're not now trying to avoid payments or using judiciary to slow down or you know delay payments, but businesses that genuinely fail due to poor economy. How about businesses like that? Any provisions for them? Well, the, the truth is this. Uh, the banks also have most of limbs. Um, the bank that structured some of those loans. And um, I can actually bought these loans hurriedly without due diligence because they were, they were need you know, after the uh, recession or the, 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 the global recession in 2009, there was need to help the economy. So government came as a, as, as, as a, as a not palliative, actually, as a, a way to sustain the economy. So we find out that most of these loans are carrying figures. But if you look at the structure of the loans, if you look at the, 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 the backups, if you look at the recovery, you know, they're actually shallow. You know, they, are, they, don't, they don't have in depth. So, Amcon now found themselves struggling uh, to perfect those documents. Some of the documents are not perfected. Some of the documents, remember I started by saying that once there's connivance, when there's collusion, the banks so for, for certain procedures and um, processes to be waived, you know. So the, the, the issue that Amcon is having is that they, they, they bought toxic, toxic assets, you know, that are so difficult to recover. But even the ones that are recoverable, you know, they, they are not also having a grasp of the situation on their hands, and also the courts are not helping matters. Hmm. All right, so um, what next? Um, as we, of course, you've already established that we struggle with the lack of strong institutions. Um, so what next would you ask, you know, if you were in a position to make new laws or in, in a position to enforce some of these uh, uh, new, you know, directives. What next would you, you know, uh, ask that must be done, either by the current administration or, you know, by um, our MDAs across the country? Because, well, uh, because I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure that this is also create making it more difficult for genuine businessmen to to get loans from banks these days. Sure, sure. Sure. Now, um, you know, we, we just need to be sincere. Sincerity sure of purpose is key here. Where if you're a banker, you must be sincere. If you're a government official, you must be sincere. Now, the truth is this. How, way forward, like I said, I was working as a banker. Most of these people owing don't want people outside to know they are owing. You know, they try to protect their integrity. You see them going everywhere with their lost addresses, and then while they are, they are holding down the economy. So we must begin to put in our conditions, maybe some elements of relaxing confidentiality. You know, we must begin to relax confidentiality if you have defaulted for several months or several years. Because people, people sit on that confidentiality or uh, oath of secrecy that you need to protect your customer, you need to do this, if, if that is relaxed. I remember us trying to recover a loan sometimes some years back. And we visited the, 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 the debtor in his church, you know, and he's a prominent person in the church. And as far as he saw us, he knew we were going to dis discuss the loan. He quickly told us, see me in my office first thing on Monday morning. Let's sort out these things. Because he doesn't want 
a stigma or something that could affect his image and his ego. So we must begin to look at the stringent measures and begin to publish names. Enough of uh, we are not ready to let even the 360 businessmen's names were not were not published. No. So we need to start seeking the institution to, uh, to to enable us to expose these people who are holding us down in terms All of right. uh, toxic um, assets and Doc also ensure that the institutions, like we said, is strong enough to cope, to cope with it. Dr. Austin Ayongo, fellow Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria and an economist, thank you so much for your time this morning thank and for you, sharing uh, with us. It's been a pleasure, always. And it's time to say goodbye. I would first of all apologize for not bringing you our uh, entertainment updates with Ife Mai this morning. But of course, they will be coming up sometime later in the week. For now, it is goodbye. Thank you so much for spending time with us on The Breakfast with every single detail that uh, we went through, the you know conversations, the uh, interviews, uh, the part where we also had to speak for ourselves. Uh, we totally enjoyed it and we hope that you did too. Yes, yes, I, I do enjoy this and I hope you enjoy as well as we rob minds on issues in Nigeria and advocate for a better society. I'm Aneta Felix and you are? We wish you a, a brilliant Tuesday ahead. Um, if you missed out on any of this, remember where to find us. Yes, it's uh, Plus TV Africa across all social media platforms. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's also at Plus TV Africa. The news comes up next at 9 a.m. Goodbye from me. See you again tomorrow morning.